so many spaces for healing individuals uh not just even with therapy but she also is a yoga instructor um and uh she does the person when it comes down to therapeutic treatments as and she's definitely um somebody that does it the same way so i want to uh, bring in alicia we're going to be talking about grief during this period alicia yeah charlotte is pretty dope Hello. yo 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 what up with you i'm good how are you i'm good i'm good i appreciate you doing this man and and coming through to drop some knowledge when it comes down to talk about grief man mm -hmm. i appreciate you having me when you sent me the flyer i was like you didn't tell me it was this type of lineup you had all the stars <laughs> Man, you a star, so don't even act like that, yo. So no, uh, I, I, hear you. I definitely, definitely appreciate you uh, coming through. Um, again, first things first. First, I, I gotta check in to see how you doing. How are you? I'm doing well. It's my favorite day of the week. So quarantine Friday. aside, I, I can't complain. It's Friday, so I'm good. It's how are Friday. you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good, man. That's I enjoy seeing us all come together but then also we we dropping knowledge but then we still having fun man just to see the people in the chat they're enjoying the dj sessions but then also making sure that they get some stuff that they can take home to their families and stuff man it's cool listen in between the speakers i was over here jamming me and the kids rocking out <laughs> i love it i love it all right so y'all i want to i want to go through and read her bio um so y'all know a little bit about her and then uh, we'll go into the session so alicia tete Te, is it Tete, right? Mm -hmm. Tete, MSW, LCSW. She is the founder of Building Endurance, P, PLLC, and the Attune uh, app, and is a nationally certified mental health therapist with a degree in social work. Alicia currently runs her own private practice where she provides outpatient therapy to children and adults, clinical supervision for provisionally licensed therapists, and community educational training. As a change agent, she provides therapy to individuals and couples who may be dealing with life stressors. In that same capacity, she provides clinical supervision and consultation to others practicing in the field. Alicia walks firmly in her faith and believes sincerely in the power of change. She continues to advocate for healthy relationships, empowerment, and decreasing the stigma around mental health. In 2017, she was named 30 Under 30 by the Black Chamber of Commerce here in Charlotte. So again, y'all welcome Alicia in. Uh, she's also a grief expert as well. So that's one of the reasons I want to bring her on. So she can just talk about, yo, what are we what are what are we dealing with right now when it comes down to looking at it from a grief perspective and you know anything else? Yeah. So I'll start by saying, like, we don't grieve well, number one. So we are very much a culture that things happen, we sweep it under the rug. Um, we are the I'm fine culture. And so it's interesting, the questions that you sent me, you were asking, what are some things that we're grieving right now? Man, we're grieving the ability to hug a friend. We're grieving the ability to celebrate nuptials. We can't have no baby showers. We can't have no barbecues. So we are grieving just human connection right now. And we're transitioning to this place of we are doing everything virtually. It's super dope that you put this conference on because this is a way for us to connect and to stay stay connected. But there are so many things that we're losing just in that human contact. Definitely, definitely. And I, I mean, you mentioned the, the, the contact of even just hugging your friend. Uh, for me, man, I won't even go home right now because I'm scared to take something to my parents because, you know, sometimes I'm still... I'm still seeing clients face to face and I don't know, I may be asymptomatic from something. And exactly. uh, I, I would love to see my parents right now because of the fact that just everything that's going on and you know, life is short, but I'm, I'm terrified to go there. So how would I deal with something like that? Man, the, I think what you're describing is just the anxiety is so heightened. And I'm a person that even before I became a clinician, I had to deal with my own anxiety, but now we're so scared. We, we are making masks. We're so scared. I went to Walmart today to try to find some daggone tissue. I text mm -hmm. my homegirl, like everybody's in gloves and masks. Like we're living in an unprecedented time. And for those of us like myself who already had anxiety, like we're, we're seeing a spike, we're seeing an increase. But then on the other side of the spectrum, what I've seen um, with my clients who were already kind of working through some anxiety, they are fine. They are in the house. 
they have their things mm -hmm. and they are looking at us extroverts like what's going on with you so i think you know it's just it's very interesting trying to navigate when nothing like this has happened in our lifetime before. And we all thought 2020 was going to be the year of vision and, and all these other cliches. But um, we started out just with a with the death of a giant. And then two months later, we're here all in our homes. So it's kind of crazy. Definitely, definitely. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that the death of a giant and, and she yeah. mentioned uh, Kobe Bean Bryant, man. And so we, we we went through a period where we're trying to grieve that that loss and then we yeah. go through this, this stage where we're actually having to stay in our homes and we're grieving so many other things so what does yeah. grief look like it can look in a lot of different ways and i want to just touch on a few types of grief and so yeah. there are a ton of clinicians in the group so i know we're familiar with the five stages so i won't go there but i want to take it a little further we and still, just talk we, about we still have we have a little uh, some general people in here as well so right. you can do the stages and you and you can you can go in the different right. so breakdown we got the five stages um, there's no specific time period. There's no specific way that grief looks for you. Um, it's anger, depression, bargaining, denial, and acceptance. And you can kind of cycle through those just year after year, depending on what you are grieving. I will say too that grief doesn't have to be just a person. Even if you get a promotion, you're grieving not working alongside those peers anymore. Even when you get a bigger home, you're grieving not being in that old neighborhood. And so that's what I mean about us really not understanding there's so many things that we need to sit in. And I'm all about leaning into that feeling. So mm. that's that on that. But then on types, one thing that I saw when Kobe passed away, um, we are right now experiencing complicated grief, meaning we were already grieving one thing and then another thing came on top of it. So it's just like if Uncle Ray Ray died and then Cousin Joe died and then you have a miscarriage like it's just one thing after the other. And so a lot of us are experiencing complicated grief right now and not even realizing it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, and it, it just compounds on top of each other, on top of just all other life stuff that we're actually dealing with. Mm -hmm. So how do you suggest someone, especially during this time period, how do we start to work through that grief? Especially since we're not able to get out and about and you a lot of stuff we just have to sit with right now. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's really difficult. I was talking to uh, my homegirl, Courtney, earlier, who's also a clinician. This time can be difficult for people who can't sit with and look within. You see like a, a ton of IG posts about um, if you can't go out, come in. And I think that's really difficult for some of us because we spend a lot of time blind to ourselves. So it's very easy to get out, and get caught up in things and we don't have to face us. You know what I mean? But this is a time where we have we really having to sit, whether we're sitting in journaling or sitting in the house with our um, partners or friends or even just sitting by ourselves. So there is something about having to spend this time and do some reflection and think about like, who am I and who am I going to be after this? Ooh, who, who am I going to be after this? That's, that's a great question. That question to a couple of my clients. And we, we talked about it on locker room talk with, with the gentleman that I work with. Um, mm -hmm. How, how do you suggest individuals go about learning who am I? So even if you're not ready to see a therapist, because I don't think the time is right for everybody. You know what I mean? Therapy is a is a journey. And so yeah. even though I'm a clinician, I'm not pushing that everybody go and talk to somebody. Um, you can I, I tell my clients all the time, if you want to know who you are, if you want to have an idea, you're not really sure. Ask three different people in your life. Somebody you went to high school with, college with, somebody that you work with, um, and just ask them what, how do they perceive you? And so that's that's kind of one way of figuring out if you're not ready just yet. And be clear that some of them are going to be completely honest. So don't ask a family member or you know a partner, but ask somebody outside of those groups, somebody that's looking at you from the outside looking in. Um, mm -hmm. Writing, journaling is huge. I think that's a huge way to just kind of get a deeper look. But to like, think about as a kid, like what did you want to be and how far away did you get from that? So one of my questions to folks in therapy is, what do you do for a living? And then my follow-up question is, do you like that shit? So a whole lot of right. us 
are out here working in jobs because that's what we're supposed to do and we don't even enjoy it and so i think another thing about this time is that you're really looking at like i i have to grieve and leave a life that i already had but when we come out of this you have the opportunity to reinvent yourself and maybe to embark on a career that you didn't even think about before all of this happened Am I answering your question? Okay, I feel like yeah, I'm like yeah, yeah. around. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, uh-uh, no. It, it, you're definitely answering the question. Um, because of the fact that grieving can, like I said, look very different. But then also, this is a time for us to be able to process that right now, and then yeah. you know, understand who, like I said, who am I during this time period? Um, I know you you mentioned journaling and, and talking to individuals that can give you an open and honest a- answer about it. What about when it? Let's say if you get to a point and you want to make these changes in your life and you some of the stuff that you have to leave behind, what does the grieving process look like when you got to leave, whether that be things, people, places, all of that stuff that you have to leave behind? Let me tell you something about leaving something behind, my friend. So before I got um, before I got partnered, um, I was wild. I was out there um, living, living my best life. Um, and whenever I got faced with hard things, I ran. Um, and I had a boyfriend from college that was like, yo, you are a runner and you can't keep running. Um, and so now being married, like that man, I got to look him in the face and he has to see me for who I am. And I I have to leave that behind. And so one of the things that I want folks to think about is like, yo, you, there are some things that you have to leave behind if you want to be somebody else. Um, years ago, and, and this has happened on multiple occasions. When I lose a friend, when I lose a job, the first thing I got to do is I got to look at me. What was what could I have done differently? What role did I play in that scenario? So not just this blame game of, oh, it's the person or, oh, they shouldn't have left me or whatever. I got to look at sometimes I'm the toxic ass person. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I'm the person that they don't need in their lives. And that's cool. And so I think in this time, one thing that I want folks um, that's watching to really think about is, what what in me do I need to leave behind so I can come out of this a better person? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely, I love that. And even bringing it back to COVID nineteen. So like you know, a lot of times when you even so now, let's say we have a quote unquote excuse for some stuff that we want to grieve about, right? Let's say if you someone gets sick or you know, and they they pass away, God forbid, from from um, you know COVID nineteen. So now yeah, yeah, yeah. people people that are that are grieving, they can blame it on this this disease that we really don't have any, much control over. How do you think? Mm-hmm. How do you uh, suggest someone process that type of grief? So the type of grief that you're describing is unauthorized. And mm-hmm. another example of unauthorized grief is, let's say you. Um, some people felt like people grieving the loss of Kobe was unauthorized because we didn't know him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And the thing about grief, just like trauma, is it belongs to each of us. And so what I want people to stray away from, sometimes you'll start talking to folks and they're like, well, why are you sad about that? And what's wrong with you? And you shouldn't even. And they might not be the folks you got to talk to that situation about. You know, right. sometimes you got to to certain things. And so I want people to hear that your experience belongs to you. Mm -hmm. And so even if somebody passed away and you don't know them and you want to feel sad, you have the right to feel sad. You know what I mean? And some of us are empaths. Some of us feel very, very strongly. Some of us can feel everything around us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then some of us are not those people. I'm not the super sensitive, touchy feely person, even though I'm a clinician. (laughs) However, however, some people are, and that's cool. And so I think one of the things that I really want us to do um, on the human side of things is respect that each of us, we are who we are, and that's totally okay. And you can be in the same group of people and be able to differentiate, which means you can be you, you and I can be friends, Rashawn, and not have the same values. And that doesn't mean that I don't respect you. We just don't have the same values. Right. Agreed. I think think the key part that you mentioned is... uh recognizing that we're human and looking at the human side of things. And yes. instead of putting these uh, unrealistic expectations on people and that we really don't even put on ourselves. Exactly, exactly. Or holding people to a standard when you ain't got your own damn standards. That's the other thing. Right. You're trying to hold the bar and you can't, you can't hold your own bar. Right. And so you know, we, we got to We got to be able to, um, we have to be able to see the human and understand that 
people are dealing with things that have nothing to do with us. And we can't take everything personally. And, and speaking of grief, even, you know, going back to that example, sometimes people exit our lives and, and because we've done something to them, we're like, oh, shit, what did I do? Mm-hmm. They don't want to talk to me anymore. And really it has nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. And so really understanding, too, that sometimes people are working through things that you you won't have any idea about and just not to take that personally. Right, 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 right. You can't make everything about you. No. Definitely. I appreciate it, man. I definitely want to open it up for, for questions from people because I know we got about five more minutes left. Uh, let me see. I'm going to scroll into it. Any Anything you want to drop while I while I scroll through and make sure to see if we got any questions? Um, I will say for folks, watch out um, for grief bleeding over into depression. And so it's perfectly fine, right, to um, experience grief and you're grieving and you're sad and then you're bargaining and you're doing, you're doing different things. Um, but then it, you, it goes to the next level to where you can't go to work anymore because you're still feeling so sad. You can't engage in other relationships with folks because you're, you're just feeling so down and out. Um, or you start to think about harming yourself because you want to go on to meet that person on the other side. And so just wanting people to be my, to be, mindful of some of those signs of where like no i'm not i'm no longer grieving anymore now I'm probably i've crossed over into depression right 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 and knowing the difference and then sometimes mm-hmm. understanding that you may not be the one to pick out what that difference is you may need help to, to point that stuff out no Absolutely. definitely uh, i got a question from james hopper he says uh would you say that we are always grieving over something throughout our lives if so how can we find ways to be aware of it and get through them I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I'm a little biased as black folks. We done lost a lot of shit. We, 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 we have experienced a whole, whole lot of trauma. And so if you ask some people, absolutely, we are constantly experiencing a loss. Um, but I think awareness is key. And so keeping those people around you that are going to be honest with you and not just tell you what you want to hear again, if you're not ready to see that therapist, but also too, like, we got to be introspective guys. We have to be able to look within. We have to be able to say like, okay, this is my norm. This is not my norm. And I'm not being myself. You know what I mean? So I am a huge basketball fan. When I stop watching basketball, something is going on. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I love to work out. When I'm not working out, something is going on. So making sure you're being introspective and just keeping an eye out when you're not yourself anymore. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, <laughs> somebody asked, do you take signal? They need to sign up. <laughs> I do take signal. And I know hey. some other people <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, somebody said, can you explain the other types of grief? They said you you mentioned there are different types. So what are the different types? Yes. So I talked about unauthorized and I talked about complicated. There's anticipatory grief. And this is experienced when somebody, for example, in our family has cancer. And we know that at some point they're going to pass away. And so we're kind of anticipating it. So we may want to visit with them more or we we may want to um, get connected with them because we know that eventually eventually they're going to pass away. Um, There's also delayed grief. And so this is when... um, you something happens and right afterwards you don't feel the feelings just yet and people may be asking like why aren't you crying like what's wrong with you and then that those tears and that crying and those feelings come a little bit after the event and so that's the lady grief um chronic and complicated grief are the same and so that's when things keep happening and piling up on top of each other um unauthorized i mentioned and then lastly inhibited so again just this idea of You don't have the space to feel because you got to do everything else. And this is probably a good one for like um, the super mom or like the strong friend. We we go through things and it's like we just got to keep going. We got to keep going. And so then we may be a little inhibited in in our ability to grieve. Definitely. I I can relate to that one because, you know, Mm -hmm. we are always giving to others and, and we we don't take the time to process. Even during this time period of that so much stuff is going on, we're remaining yeah. uh, the person to to uh, continue to give out to other people so that because they're looking to us. Uh, yeah. Another question. Yeah. Someone okay. said, any advice for someone cycling in and out of the stages of grief? Uh, her mom passed away three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, my first 
my first thing is always going to be to lean into those feelings. I think you owe it to yourself to be able to grieve. Um, and again, if you're not ready to see a therapist, think about how you can celebrate your mother's life. I don't think there's anything wrong with creating a new tradition when someone transitions on. Um, and we can definitely do things in their honor. So listen to her favorite music or wear clothes that she would enjoy or cook her favorite meal. And so again, thinking about how can I, I find myself cycling, how can I transition and really celebrate her life? I think that's super Super important. Definitely. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do two more questions. I know we all want, okay. we're approaching the six o'clock hour. Um, someone asked, "How can someone that needs touch navigate their emotions during this time?" Man, um, and they need touch. Keeping this. So you key. mentioned yes. <laughs> I'll keep the key all right. So you need touch. Number one, you can get you a pet. That's a very easy one. Um, but number two, and it's so interesting, I have these things on my desk from an earlier session. Some of us are tactile folks. I got my little rice bowl here that I may just put my hands in just for a little something, a little feeling. Also, you can do cloths. Um, I also have like a little satchel bag here. So thinking about what are some household things that I can do that kind of feel good. I remember as a kid, I kept this little this little cloth in my hand because I needed that touch. And so those are some PC things that you can do for touch. I appreciate it. <laughs> and we can make inferences from the other ones. Um, <laughs> for another time. Because, yeah, we know everybody, you know, y'all with y'all families and stuff. So we want to make sure we're conscious of those things. Um, next question is, what are some common things that are grieved from a lost relation, romantic relationship? Oh man, having somebody to go on dates with, having somebody to tell to tell your secrets to, having somebody to have fun with, having somebody to cry with. I want to tell you guys something. I experienced um, a physically and a mentally abusive relationship in the past. And even though I was glad to be on the other side, there were still things about that relationship that I grieved. And so sometimes grief looks like leaving a very bad thing but missing the good parts about that thing. And that's totally normal for us. Definitely, definitely. Alicia, man. Oh, you got, okay, so we got, I got one more request from Alicia. Okay. Uh, I know we got questions, but I'm gonna send those questions to Alicia and maybe she can answer them like through Instagram post or, you know, just y'all make sure y'all follow her. Y'all, I send y'all y'all information. Uh, yeah. Okay. Us, you want me to tell? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Bet in February, wrote a journal for clinicians. I love working with clinicians. I love working with students. I love working with interns. It's called Not Healed as Fuck. And it is just a compilation of stories from people in the helping profession. And then about a hundred or so journal props because I am a writer. I am a journalist. So um, yeah, check out this book. You can get it on Amazon.com. You can get on barnesandnoble.com for the hard copy. Rashawn is giving away five copies. I'm going to do 10. Yes. I'm going to do 10. I'm going to do 10. Yeah. All right. I did, I did 10 for Bache. I'm going to do 10 for you. All right. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So giving away 10 copies. Um, you know, it's so vulnerable putting yourself out there like this in this way. Um, but I know how much I enjoy writing and how much I need a space as clinician. And so, yeah, not healed. Hey, man, Alicia, I appreciate you. Um, you got some gems. I know a lot of people are definitely going through a tough period right now. And, and just going through a tough period in general when it comes down yeah. to these things. So, no, y'all make sure y'all follow her. Um, homie, I appreciate you joining in and um, okay. just, you know, dropping drop knowledge for us, man, Like as always. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. Hey, no problem. So you make sure you have a good rest of the weekend and I'll be in touch. All right. Peace. All right, y'all. So uh, no more DJ sets. Uh, I mean, DJs. There, it's six o'clock hour on a on a Friday evening. You know, people want to they want to turn up, turn up for real. So, uh, but I do want to talk about. I really want to just opening up the floor. Um, I'm supposed to uh, have like a musical selection, but I'm not even about to just. You know, have no musical. I'm gonna let y'all ask me questions right now until our next session, um, and then also also run through run through my sponsors real quick too. Uh, let me see. I gotta let me find it real quick. Uh, 
So let me see. I'm gonna put. I'm sorry. I'm pulling on my sponsors. I got. I got to shout them out. I had a graphic. Uh, <laughs> said what? No DJ. Sheesh. I mean, no. <laughs> uh, let's see. So hold on one second. Yeah, one second. One second. I know next we got coming up is uh, Dr. Anita Phillips, man. She, she's a dope individual as well. Um, Alicia, they say you are awesome. Of course. These are the homies, man. I, I'm very selective as far as who I bring in and introduce y'all to. These, these are my peoples. I understand that their expertise and the things that they are able to get done. So, yeah. Definitely need these books. Oh yeah, yeah. Y'all make sure. Oh, sorry. So I'm giving away the books. Um, ten of Bache's books and ten of um, Alicia's books. Uh, the thing is, you're going to have to, um, you know, fill out the survey and then we'll do a raffle. Now, on top of that, uh, everybody talking about a book. I got my own book too. So, uh, and what I'll do is. Uh, for me, I give away 20 books, man. <laughs> um, I got them waiting. So my thing is with the book, um, but for my, my, my raffle is a little bit different. So y'all know I run a nonprofit, uh, useless and we do uh, that's a lot of different things. Uh, but when it comes down to people accessing care, so my raffle is going to be a little bit different from the aspect of, I would want you to donate to useless, uh, whether that be through, uh, cash app is at Eustress Inc. or you know dollar sign Eustress Inc. or go to the Eustress Inc. dot org um, website. Even if it's a dollar, like it, it can go a long way, honestly, um, because of the fact that we're doing some amazing work. But then also, it's a lot of people during this time that need the help. Um, so um, actually, been subsidizing people's therapy sessions, the people that can't afford it. Um, also, do free therapy sessions with with individuals. Um, as well, um, I, I work with a, a group of young black boys, man, and, uh, and able to, um, work with them and their families and the teachers that work with them as well. So, um, we do a lot of work. We do the, uh, the conference calls every week, uh, locker room talk. I got a couple of my gentlemen here that call in every Wednesday night. Um, so definitely, uh, we do that, that stuff as well. Um, we do the adult coloring nights. Oh. Yeah, so I, I said that I was going to uh, mention uh, something during during this conference that uh, is going to be major. Uh, so what we're going to do is I do, I host this thing called um, Eustress Adult, I mean Eustress in Colors Adult Coloring Night. And so going to do that, but we're going to do a virtual one next Friday night. So uh, be on the lookout for that. We're going to you know drop the information for that. Uh, probably tomorrow uh, so you can register for that we're going to it's going to be some of the you know same things but we want to make sure that individuals you get your coloring books uh get your your markers it's gonna be a family event so you can have your kids there too um but we're going to do an adult a, a virtual adult coloring night next friday night we're gonna do it from 6 to 8 p.m um we'll try to get nightcrawler back in there so we go rock out uh we want to see your pictures and all of that stuff too so yeah man next friday night 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to do useless in color adult vir virtual adult coloring night. So be be sure to check that out, man. Oh, man. So, oh, I said I was going to announce my sponsor. I'm sorry. I get off track. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through it real quick before we go to uh, Dr. Anita, man. Dr. Anita is the big homie. She um, is an amazing lady, man. And I'm very inspired by, by the work that she does with combining um, faith into mental health, because a lot of times you don't see individuals um, doing that or have the ability to do so. Oh, so shout out to our sponsors. Um, sponsors is uh, Eustress Inc. Um, of course, TMD Management, uh, 215, my boy uh, KP, he is uh, the graphic designer. And I'll put all of this up at the end so you'll see, you can scroll through the sponsors as well. Uh, the Good Stress Company, um, Heart and Mind Counseling, um, Building Endurance P PLLC, uh, Kaleidoscope uh, Counseling as well. Therapy for Black girls, man. Dr. Joy is amazing, man. I definitely appreciate you, uh, Dr. Joy. Um, um, Crash Build, that's Omar's company. Y'all make sure y'all check that out. Again, I, yeah. and then oh, also, I think 
when you were in the reception, you can see the sponsors there too as well, right? Uh, so Mental Health America, man, they have a lot of information when it comes down to being able to um, address, you know, certain things for when it comes down to mental health and Mental Health America. They also have a, a free uh, mental health screening and they have a, a COVID-19 kit as well. Uh, so I'll definitely send all of that that information out. The, the free links to that, you can definitely check those things out. Um, uh, Bird um, Career Counseling, my girl Letitia, yo, she she be uh, she get your resume and all that stuff. Or she can help you get a job. Uh, some people may need that during this time. Melanin and mental health, yo. So some people ask me where I got this shirt. Therapy is dirt, dope, right? I got it from Melanin and Mental Health. Uh, y'all make sure y'all check them out. Melaninmentalhealth.com. They are um, they're the big homies, man. When it comes down to addressing this stuff and uh, just uh, people of color, so they have a directory and all of that stuff as well. So we have therapy for black girls, and you have uh, melanin and mental health. Uh, the safe place uh, that is an app for people of color to be able to um, tap into just different resources for to address your mental health. Uh, and tech for girls, my homegirl Kalia, yo, she does she teach girls uh, coding. And she's been doing it for a while, but she does some amazing things there. Uh, be great. My boy, hey, my brother, Brandon Mills, he supports me in any and everything that I do. And it's, it's also uh, reciprocated. So he's also a sponsor. Profound gentlemen. They support individual, they support men that are teachers in the field. So they're doing some amazing work as well. The plug, the content plug, yo, Alexis, she's out in, um, she's out in Austin, Texas, and she's a social media guru. So make sure y'all check her out. Uh, Zeal for Life Dance Company, Danielle, she's done the virtual yoga sessions. So anybody want to do yoga with me next week, yo, um, you know what? I'll give away five sessions for that too. Um, but you got to actually, you know, uh, these, these you got to donate the users. And then, like I said, it could be a dollar, but I'll do give away the virtual yoga sessions as well. Uh, my state of mind, man. So I am a cohort member. Uh, so y'all know Chance the Rapper, he donated a lot of money when it comes down to addressing mental health issues in the state of uh, the city of Chicago. And uh, I'm a member of the My State of Mind cohort where we're uh, building a platform for individuals to be able to address uh, their issues. Uh, well, be able to access care to address their issues. So they're sponsoring this event as well. And then uh, y'all seen the, the last shirt that I had on it said Young Black and Educated. So Young Black and is also. Uh, one of the sponsors. You can go to youngblackand.com and purchase your shirts. I also got a hoodie, but of course it ain't even uh, hot enough to wear that right now. So going to switch to Dr. Anita Phillips, Phillips man. This is the last session of the evening. Uh, but last but not least, I want to introduce Dr. Phillips. We're going to bring her in right now. Let's see, let's see. Um, it's having issues, let's see. I'm, uh, I am gotta text it and try to get it wrong. You know how your teachers used to say, y'all, y'all chat with yourselves while I get this going. Yeah, y'all just chat with yourselves. 